The announcement of Bitcraft, Age of Automata, way back in 2021, caused quite the commotion in the IGN community, and I'm not gonna lie, I was skeptical. Though this survival crafting sandbox MMO looked absolutely beautiful, I wanted to see some evidence of how exactly players are supposed to craft this world together from the ground up. I was excited to finally go hands-on. I played the beginning stages of Bitcraft on PC, learning the basics of crafting and staking my claim in the world, before going on a fun little dungeon adventure. I can say that Bitcraft has come a long way since that initial announcement. What I played was memorable and, more importantly, fun. But it also has a long way to go. With the amount of ambition the developers are feeding into this game, it still remains to be seen whether Bitcraft will fulfill its lofty vision. I was guided by Tyler Cloutier, co-founder of Studio Clockwork Labs, who builds Bitcraft as the first large-scale survival crafting MMO. Though currently, it feels less like a world in which you have to survive and more of an opportunity to build a civilization from the ground up, with the help of thousands of other players. As a PC gamer entering this world for the first time, I was immediately impressed by the graphics. The colors were gorgeous and stylized, like a leveled up Tears of the Kingdom, and moving around felt fluid. I must admit, initially, I was confused by the movement controls, with the WASD keys controlling the camera rather than my character. Instead, the game uses a click-to-move system to facilitate crafting. Upon waking up in the world with nary a hint of my automaton's background, I quickly found myself perusing a Pokedex-like menu of crafting recipes to discover, find, and learn. It's from here that you can select what to build and start your first construction site. And this is where the fun really begins. Scrappy, early game structures can be built by just piling a bunch of sticks onto that construction site. But you likely won't get far as you learn more complex schematics, and this is where the collaborative community aspect of the game kicks in. Other players can drop by your site to contribute building materials or maybe even resources specific to their own specializations. In later stages of Bitcraft, projects may take days or even weeks to complete. Or, as Tyler suggests, you can also think of it in terms of people. Some projects need tens or hundreds of people to reach completion. But what one giveth to the world, one can taketh away. A major concern I had was around griefing. Could another player dismantle a town you'd built from scratch? If your structures are taking up space in the world, you should be able to keep them, right? This is where the claim system comes in. You can build a totem which lets you claim a small area of land around it. Anything built within that space can only be touched by you. The initial space covers a few square yards, but as you upgrade it, the radius can grow to accommodate entire towns. As you meet and begin to form bonds with other players, you can also add others to your claim so that they can help you build the city of your dreams. You could even set up a job advertisement. Maybe you need someone with a blacksmithing specialization in your budding town to help with a specific building. I wanted to try terraforming since Bitcraft's first gameplay trailer made this seem like something you could do a little too easily. But as I quickly learned, this too requires crafting materials to raise or lower one hex-shaped terrain tile. The more you terraform a tile from its natural height, the more expensive and time-consuming it becomes. The system's in place to prevent the world from devolving quickly into an unnavigable hellscape, but with enough teamwork, you could build a pyramid or replicate a picturesque mountain range. Progression and other aspects, such as specialization, seemed scant in my playthrough. A few NPCs, called Travelers, are sprinkled throughout the world, and these guys can help you in various disciplines. For instance, one Traveler is a builder. In return for bringing him supplies, he can sell you construction tools or teach you how to build a boat. I, sadly, did not have enough sticks to exchange in return for his knowledge. Finally, I got to embark upon my first adventure. First stop? a small settlement built from the ground up. It was set up with some player-made shopping stalls, campfires for cooking, and even little houses available for rent. That's right, Bitcraft has a landlord system. 
you can build and own a home and then rent it out, furnished or unfurnished, to other players. It's a good way to establish a home base in a town, make some local friends, and even put your goods up for sale in the market. As you get higher leveled, you may want to join a more established town that has the higher level resources you need. Alternatively, you can bring in some income with your investment property and, well, lord over the place. The tools are there for you to organize a town how you want it, whether that's a quaint commune or a city under the rigorous rule of an iron fist. Though Tyler is quick to assure me that the team is constantly balancing Bitcraft's mechanics so that griefers won't go about making everyone's life a pain. After crafting my early tools, such as a pickaxe, Tyler and I headed into an ancient ruin. This prototype dungeon took the form of an underground maze. Finding a scroll on the ground, I learned that I should follow a draft through the dungeon in order to reach the end. I figured out that to accomplish this, I needed to watch the way the smoke blew from torches throughout the maze. This particular puzzle felt quite gratifying to solve, without needing hints from Tyler. I managed to get to the end of this ruin, and its treasure chests, on my own. But later stage ruins may require more teamwork, such as a minor friend to help you clear rubble. With claustrophobic dungeons being such a mainstay of RPGs, I'm hoping the final release explores different settings for these ancient ruins. I think it'd be amazing for one to hack through a rainforest and feel like you're uncovering an ancient city of gold. Clockwork Labs is a really small team. Developing an MMORPG typically takes more than just two dozen people, and they're talking about a game that will house tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of players, and beyond. In that same vein, my short time in-game only scratched the surface of the final vision, including features I didn't get to experience. PvP combat or specializations like tailoring, fishing, and even scholarly pursuits. Bitcraft is one of the most ambitious projects I've ever come across, though I am cautiously optimistic that the things I experienced will remain in the game at launch, with even more to do. Perhaps the strongest thing Bitcraft has going for it is its thoughtful consideration of social dynamics, and I'm super excited to watch Bitcraft's development as it nears release. The first closed alpha test begins April 2nd on PC. For more on Bitcraft, don't miss the original announcement trailer, as well as the first gameplay trailer. And for everything else in the world of gaming, stick with IGN.